All right, hello, welcome back. My name is Cameron Kirk, and this is video four on my series of videos for DE10 Nano projects. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a walkthrough um, on how to flash the FPGA on boot up. And uh, on this one, I'm gonna sort of do a mix up on the uh, instructions. They want us to use their Blink project, but I actually want to use our seven segment display project from video 11 on my series of videos for um, very long development. If you haven't seen that video, uh, link is up in the corner. If you want to go check it out, you can. Um, if you don't want to follow that tutorial, you just want the project files, I will have a link in the description to my Verilog tutorials um, repository where you can just uh, download the uh, clone this repository and get all the project files for Cordis and then just open it up and go from there. Um, so just to let you see what this project does, um, if we take a look at the tabletop here, I have my um, SD card removed, my USB cable is plugged into the JTAG programmer, uh, power is supplied to the board, I have Ethernet plugged in, but that's not being used right now, and the seven segment display is connected um, as described in this diagram I made. Um, so... Yeah, you'll have to use the schematics to get this connected or check out the tutorial um, and I will show you how to get this connected. Anyways, um, so this is already compiled and ready to go. Let me get all the way out of the way here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Tools and then Programmer. I'm just going to program this to the FPGA through the JTAG Programmer. Um, so everything should already be configured why can't I they're not connected oh no hardware let me get that the I just want to show you quickly what this project does if you haven't seen it I'm going to click start and if we turn our attention to the tabletop you can see that it is a simple counter you can see that seven segment display counting up um, oh, it's upside down on the camera, um, but that's okay. So we've seen this project before. We are going to have this uh, project flash to the FPGA every single time we boot that ARM processor into our Debian Linux environment. So let's get started on that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to unplug power. I'm going to unplug this USB cable and move it over to the UART USB port over here on this side for serial communication. I am going to take our micro SD card that has our Debian image on it, our custom embedded Linux image on it, and go ahead and slot that in there. And before I supply power to the board, I am going to come over to the desktop and open up a program like Putty. And I'm going to switch to serial mode. I'm going to change that baud rate to 115 200. And I am going to go to Windows Search and type in Device Manager. And this, uh, this will let you look at all of your COM ports connected. And we only have one connected. That is our DE10 Nano. Um, and it's on COM3. So if we come back to Putty, we type in COM3 and we click Open. So the terminal is dead right now. If we push enter, nothing happens. But if we take a look over at the tabletop, um, if you look at the indicator lights over here, every time I push enter, you can see that red light flashing. That means that the board is receiving communication over, over this wire. Um, and then there's a second indicator light that it flashes green. And that means that there is a message coming out of the board up this cable into the computer. And that is how we're doing serial communication. Um, <clears throat> anyways, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to supply power <clears throat> supply power to the board. And while, while I do that, you'll see Putty start to come to life as it's receiving those messages from the board. Why can't I plug this in? There we go. And it's booting. <clears throat> And it's going to boot us into Linux. And while that goes, you'll notice on the tabletop, our uh, FPGA is no longer doing our project since we cycled power to the board. The FPGA doesn't have persistent memory. It has volatile memory. And when it loses power, it loses the design files. 
All right, so we're going to log in to root. Password is root. All right, and then the first thing we need is we need an... Oh, you can't see my screen. Oh, darn it. Okay, hold on. It's fine. Let me get out of the way here. Okay, so I'm logged in here. And the first command we're going to do is ifconfig, and this will give us our network information. We are interested in the Ethernet port. We want to know the IP address, and there it is. So I'm going to copy this. So now I have that in my clipboard, but I may have done that too soon. I'm going to close the programmer. What we need to do next is we need to go to File. I think I've already done this ahead of time. Go to File and then Convert Programming Files. And then we want to the output, we want a RBF file, a raw binary file. And then we can give it a name here. I'm going to call mine sevseg, just for a different name that I know I haven't used yet. And uh, down here, if you click on SOF data, this is our actual, um, you know, uh, file that we use to program using the JTAG program. If we go into output files, um, our 7 seg counter SOF is here, and this is going to be converted into a raw binary file. All right, I'm going to click generate. And it says it was successful. Very good. Um, give me a second here. I need some. Okay, we're good. I accidentally had the wrong, this is my second time recording this video. I accidentally had the wrong microphone set the first time through. Okay, so we can close this, we're done with that. And we are going to go to our DE10 Nano live demos folder. I'm basically going into the folder where the project is saved. And so here is vid 11. Um, and then if I go into output files, we can see our sevseg. You can see this is my third attempt doing this. Um, okay, so our sevseg is the one we want to send to the board. Now, the, how we're going to do this is we have the IP address in our copy to our clipboard. Uh, if you don't want to copy it, you can just type it in. Um, but we're going to shift, hold down the shift key and right click in a blank space in this folder to open PowerShell. And um, we're going to run an SCP command. And we are going to send it our sevseg rbf file so i typed sev se tab and then that completes the rest of the file name for us and then we need a destination so we're going to send this to the root user at this location and i just pasted in the ip address i need to erase that space though uh, i pasted it in using right click uh, and then we're going to type a colon and then a tilde for the home home folder or the home directory for this user. If I switch back over to, before pushing enter, I'm going to switch back over to putty and do an LS. We do have a seven seg RBF. Um, let me just remove that because we're not using that. And I'm also going to remove, well, uh, yeah, I'll just remove um, FAT directory. Okay, so here's what it looks like before. And then we are going to run this command. It wants to authenticate. We're going to say root, push enter, and it says it just transmitted that raw binary file. If we switch back over to Putty, do an ls, we see that we now have this 7 seg raw binary file. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to make a folder that will be our mount point. So I'm going to call this FAT, just like they do in the uh, tutorial over here on how to um, copy it into the FAT partition or the FAT partition. So we're going to make a FAT folder. We'll do the dash P option. And then we're going to mount dev mmc key one to FAT. And now if we ls FAT, we see we have all sorts of good stuff in here. Cool. So now the only thing we have to do next is we have to copy our RBF file into the FAT folder. And it is very important that this RBF file is named SOC underscore system. And uh, in order for this to work, you must have followed along with um, how they describe building embedded Linux, because one of the things they do is they customize U-Boot to um, load uh, the FPGA with this raw binary file located at this location. So it's all hard coded um, and you have to do that for this to work. And it has to be that name because it's hard coded. Um, so just so you know, okay, so let's go ahead and do that step. By the way, I do have a tutorial, uh, walkthrough on that, um, this building embedded Linux. So 
um, the video. Uh, you can go check it out if you want to do that. Okay, anyways, let's go back. Uh, we're going to do a CP. We're going to send the 7SAG, 7 7 and we're sending that to FAT slash SOC underscore system dot RBF. Enter. So now if we do LSFAT, we have that RBF right there. Cool. So now we're going to unmount by typing U mount FAT. Now if we LS FAT, there's nothing in there because what we just unmounted from that mount point. And we're going to do a reboot. And I'm going to push enter. And while that is rebooting, if we look at the tabletop, the FPGA is not programmed, but in a couple of seconds here, it will be programmed. And it now has our project on there. Very cool. Well, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you found that interesting or helpful. Um, feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions on this. This is a very simple video, so not, not too much work here. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.